in this video, we'll look through how the database optimizer decides which index to use, especially if there are multiple indexes. Uh, this is very useful if you want to know whether your table needs an extra index or not. Because if you have multiple indexes, how do you know which index the database is going to use? It's not going to use all of them all the time. It really depends. This video is going to explain these kind of different kind of cases, right? This video is not going to discuss the combined indexes, you know, one index that have multiple columns, right? Because I already discussed that. So let's say we have a beautiful table with just two columns. F1, F2. Column 1 has an index, uh, F1 IDX and column 2 has an index F2 IDX and we're going to do a select star from ta the table where F1 equal 1 and F2 equal 4. So let's go through some scenarios to see how the database optimizer decide to weigh. Should I use F1 index or F2 index? There are so many ways to solve this, to look for these values, right? So let's take a little case number one. Case number one is when the database optimizer decide to use both of them. So what it does is it, it queries F1 IDX looking for the value one in this case, finding all the row IDs that matches and tuples in case of Postgres, row IDs in case of Oracle and SQL Server, and it collects all these row IDs. And then it does the same exact search but with the value four on F2 IDX. So it searches and collects a different set of row IDs. And in case of an end, it will essentially do an intersection. It's like, okay, what is the values that are in here, not in here? And then uh, essentially merges the results. And or it's going to merge the result and essentially union them, right? So that's that's how it does. It. The effective result set, the row IDs are are collected. That's the final result. You go to the table if necessary, obviously, and you collect the actual values from the table, from the heap, right? So when does it actually do this? It really depends. If the values are not too small, if, they, if we know that we're not going to get so little of a result, because if we're going to get a little of a result, it's not worth searching both indexes. One is enough, right? Especially in case of an end, right? These cases get really tedious, right? And if we get too large of a result, if we know that the index is going to turn so many rows, so many row IDs, it's just not worth looking through the index. In this case, we're going to go through the table index scan, right? So it really, really depends on, uh, and that's all heuristics the database uses to decide what, what of this, right? So that's case one. So let's talk about case two. The case two is when the optimizer decides to use one index, over the other. So let's take an example. We're going to show an example right here. Uh, the database decides to use F1 index only, search all the rows for the value of one, and then we collect all the rows and then don't use the second index, right? Let's just go immediately to the table, fetch those rows, and then do a recondition, refilter the results based on F2 equal four, right? So Databases do usually do that when they know that F2 index returns so many rows, while F1 returns very few rows, and the condition is an end. It, because if I know it's an end, then I know, of course, I'm going to go with the smaller one, because anything that doesn't match F1, right, is out of the result set, right? So it's going to go with F1. Example is a primary key. If I have a primary key, the database almost always going to use the primary key index, in case of an and again, or then or it's a different situation, right? It's because you get more results, right? And then go back to the table directly and fetch the results we want to, right? It's just not worth searching two indexes because B trees are not cheap, guys. And, and even LSS, LSM trees are not cheap. Indexes are not cheap to search. Yeah, if you're searching, if you know that you're going to get so, so few of the values, then it's worth searching the index. If you know that you're going to get a lot of rows back, then it's not worth searching the index and maybe table scan is actually better. And you might say, how do you know? How does the database know that, hey, this index is going to result so many rows versus this search is going to result into fewer rows? Well, there's something called the statistics. The stats, real, really powerful. The database keeps stats of the table. says, okay, here's the table. Here's approximately how many rows there. Here's approximately how many ones are there. Here's approximately how many uh, 
threes are there and, and all these kind of values so they are not 100 percent correct but they give really a lot of values and you can also always update these statistics with a command called analyze or sometimes it's called, i think gather statistics and oracle right so that's the idea okay really again depends on an and or an or here but here's one example where we use one index over the other right just one and then filter so an index with a filter that's case two and case number three is just the database decides you know what you guys suck both indexes suck i'm not gonna the search to get for the value f1 equal one and f2 equal four is just gonna return the whole table almost the whole table three quarter of the table i did my math and this is what i think so guess what i'm not gonna use both of you i'm gonna already go to the index because i need to go there anyway because i'm gonna select other columns the database decide to search uh, the search will lead so many rows just like let's go to the table directly and do filter because it's much cheaper and some databases like postgres does a threading multi-threading and uh issue so many workers so you can do uh, multiple workers to to scan the table right so table statistics are very very critical here so if you got some wrong result right let's say here's where, where things uh, get nasty sometimes <laughs> I, I got bit so many times with this here's an example you bring a table very fresh table right empty right so there is statistics almost zero it knows that hey table is empty you insert one row you insert th two rows three rows and then the table is get update, updated every asynchronously right now it knows it has only three rows and then you do an operation to insert three million rows or 300 million rows you j just in bulk and you're just uh, immediately after you insert it you just do queries you know what will happen in this case the database if you don't update the statistics it will you'll execute some something like this and will say hey what should i do let's look let's look at the statistic oh this table has only three rows so <laughs> it's always easier to scan it uh, fully and in this case it's going to do a full table scan pulling all the 300 million rows to look through this i've been i've got bitten so many times by this because i forgot to update this or immediately i i did my queries after this so always if you're using postgres do analyze uh what's the other command vacuum full vacuum to clean up all that garbage and then uh, and then after that just do an analyze in in, in oracle use gather statistics schema statistics and sql server i forgot what's the correct execute planner i forgot what's, what it's called for the sql server but yeah you can do all these kind of stuff guys essentially and for those who want to advance stuff if you know what you're doing if you really know what you're doing you can use database hinting you can in the queries include uh, some sort of a comments like this one the one you see on the screen to kind of force the database to say hey you database you're dumb you don't know anything please trust me i want you to always use the index of f1 or use the index of f2 because i have more knowledge than you do because of certain situation right because my application i know what i just did you are not uh caught up to what i just did as an uh, as a database so trust me your stats are not up to date to what i'm j about to do plus maybe the human in this case are, are way smarter than machines right and, and unless the ai picks up anytime soon i don't know i don't think it, it will but anytime soon so it was gonna take time all right guys uh, that's it for me today very quick video talking about how these databases use the indexing very very critical again i miss uh, i i omitted so many details for example so we'll give we'll give this uh uh we'll we'll, we'll open up for questions and we'll have some discussions on on what if there is an or if there is a join it completely changed the dynamic right this the building a database is not something easy it's really really difficult but these tools will help you while you're executing a query at least you know hey i know that f1 is not gonna have a lot of value it's gonna have uh let's say it's gonna have a lot of values let's say you have one two three that's only the unique values you're gonna have right or uh i don't know let's, let's take a, a real example um Let's say you're building a customer database, right? And you have 
the states, right, in the United States, like California, Texas, whatever, all of them, right? And let's say your database is almost exclusively all people from California, right? And you have an index on the state field. Obviously, if all of them are California, that's just... That's just a useless index right there because like what what is gonna give me is if i search where state is equal to california that's the entire table right so but let's say you have three customers on texas and one from florida searching that one that florida is way faster than searching the 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 300 million uh, no 300 million that's the entire united states but you get the idea right if you have one value or few values, indexes are beautiful for this, right? But if you have so much rows that you're coming back, that's where you play the game of multiple indexes. Okay, you know what? I know that this row, this index is going to give me this much rows back. I'm going to slash it down with another index. So let's put that. But you have to think of how sparse your table looks like right and in these kind of cases all right i'm gonna leave you there guys i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye